Here's one of the most annoying things known to mankind about Adobe Illustrator. I'm trying to select the black box to change its color, but every time I try and click on this, it selects never instead. And there's actually a very simple fix for this, and it's been hidden in plain sight all this time. Today I'm going to share seven different Adobe Illustrator tips with you that I wish I knew a lot sooner. Tip number one is a very simple text effect that you can easily apply using the appearance panel. So first of all, select your word, then add a stroke. Head over to the FX panel right here and add a new effect. Go to path, offset path, and then hit OK. Now at first sight, this looks very weird, but if we go back to FX and then head over to the Pathfinder section and click add, as you can see, it creates a really nice stroke effect. And this is also editable. So let's do fantastic instead. There we go. The stroke has moved with the change in text, which is really, really cool and makes for an interesting text effect. It's actually a really new feature within Illustrator that enables you to recolor your entire design using AI. And you can find this feature under the edit menu down here, click on edit colors and select generative recolor beta. So this is currently still in beta, probably going to get a lot better over the coming months or years. You've got some sample prompts that you can select down here and it will open up uh, some color variations or you can enter um, your own prompt at the top to generate a new color scheme. So you could go for uh, monochromatic, for example, you could go for warm colors, you can enter various different things into here to get a variety of different results. If you're looking for a specific style, a specific feeling with your colors, then you can quickly generate them right here without having to go in and manually change everything. So definitely a super cool feature. Sometimes uh, the color schemes that come out are not perfect for the design you're using and it kind of obscures the design. But as you can see here, most of these actually look really cool and give a good alternative to the original color scheme. So here I've got two different objects. I've got some Christmas lights and I've got a type layer that says Christmas on it. And I want to combine these two and add some depth to the design by having a few of the lights in the background and a few of them in front of the letters. And typically that process would take forever and be really tedious in Illustrator, but there is a cool feature to make this a lot easier. So select all of your objects, head over to the object menu, go to intertwine and select make. And now whatever you draw over will be hidden behind the other shapes. So if I wanted to hide this section, there we go. It is now behind the letter C. And also in reverse, if I draw over this again, it will be revealed again. So this is definitely really handy, super cool feature that can quickly make a design look very interesting. You also get these preset boxes that get highlighted that you can just click onto. And then again, that will hide your shapes. And yeah, you basically have to just go through your design, hide whatever you want to be in the background, and then you'll quickly create a super cool effect. So let's hide these two sections. And that will make the S look quite interesting. We could hide these two as well right here. And a quick tip as well, if you want to click out of this, you can hold down control and click on the artboard. Now this is back to the old group right here. But if you want to go back to editing it, select the group and click edit right here. Or if you want to release the intertwine and get rid of it completely, then use the release button. And there we go. That's definitely made the design look a bit more interesting. I understand it's hard to read, but this is not just for Christmas and Christmas light designs. This feature can be super helpful in many different scenarios. Speaking of being super useful in many different scenarios, that is actually where Skillshare comes in, who have very kindly sponsored this video today. And Skillshare is an online learning platform with many different high quality classes that can be super relevant to you as a print on demand seller. I just recently watched a class showing you how to apply super cool custom textures to your illustrations in Adobe Illustrator. And you can definitely use this sort of technique for improving the designs that you put on your t-shirts. Besides that, you can also find lots of good courses about how to start a successful Etsy store, about doing social media marketing, which can definitely help increase your sales or 
specific classes that are dedicated to designing better t-shirts. And the first 1,000 people to follow the link in the description will actually get a free trial to Skillshare for 30 days, which is super cool. So you can test it out and see if it works for you. I've used Skillshare many times in the past and definitely gained a lot of valuable skills. So if you've got an arrangement of different objects within Illustrator, you can actually create a pattern very easily out of them. So all you have to do is select all of the objects, group them with Control G, then head over to Object, go to Pattern and Make, and then this new window will open up right here. You see a preview of what the pattern currently would look like if you saved it, and you can change the result over here with these settings. So the first thing I like to do is clicking on the pattern tile tool right here, and then you can drag this box out a tiny bit in the corners to make sure the spacing um, is a little bit wider so these objects are not uh, touching. There we go, I think that's all right. Then what you can do as well is change the type of grid. So we can do brick by row right here. We've got various different um, settings for the offset as well. You can mess around with that. And another useful feature is the amount of copies you're getting, um, which you can decide down here. Then once you're done with the settings, all you have to do is click done and the pattern will be added to your swatches over here in the swatch panel. Now, how do you use the pattern? Let's get rid of these shapes. So let's say you wanted to create a pattern in the shape of a rectangle. All you have to do is select the rectangle tool from your toolbar, draw out the shape. You can also click on the app board and enter the exact dimensions right here. Then what you have to do next is head to the swatches panel and click on the pattern swatch that we just saved. And as you can see, this pattern is quite zoomed in, but a quick way to fix that is with the scale tool over here. Just double click onto this and and then this window will open up. The first thing you need to do in the scale window is actually uncheck transform objects. And then we can sort of play around with the uniform slider right here to turn down the scale and percentage. And as you can see, now the pattern is repeating more nicely and it's zoomed out uh, so we can easily apply this to different products. Tip number five is a quick and easy one regarding your default font. So I'm sure most of you are aware that if you click onto the app board with your type tool enabled, you will get Myriad Pro, which no one really ever uses. So a quick way to change this default font is heading up to window, scrolling down all the way to type, opening the character styles window. And then here we can actually define the character style options. And if you head to basic character formats right here, this is where you can change your font as well as some other features like the actual default font size, leading, tracking and kerning. And yeah, this is pretty cool. So once you're done, just hit OK. Now, if I delete this and use the type tool again, yeah, by default, it comes up with Behringer. Tip number six is creating a super cool layout in Adobe Illustrator that can help you whilst creating your designs. So first of all, head up to window and select new window. And as you can see, that has opened up a second instance of the original document. Now, if we go back to window to arrange and select tile, we can actually see both of these documents next to each other. The cool thing about this is we could have this one zoomed out on the right so we can see the entire design at full size. Meanwhile, we can edit the design on the left and preview the changes over here. So, so let's say we duplicate these hearts right here. There we go. We can see what happened on the other screen, which is super useful if you've got a lot of details in your design that you need to move around and change, or maybe you want to get an easy overview of the design to see whether it's still easy to read once the edits have been applied. Here's one of the most annoying things known to mankind about Adobe Illustrator. I'm trying to select the black box to change its color, but every time I try and click on this, it selects never instead because the never text box is massive. And there's actually a very simple fix for this and it's been hidden in plain sight all this time. So all you have to do is head to edit, go to preferences, select type, 
and then you want to check this option right here that says type object selection by path only. So now if we hit OK, you can only select the type if you click on the actual path right here. You can't actually select it from any of the letters like this. You have to be very specific, but that means we can now select this box underneath very easily and we don't have the other word getting in the way. And now I can change this color to red super easily like that. If you want to learn how to create this vintage text effect using Adobe Illustrator, then just click the thumbnail and you'll know how to do it in no time.